Welcome back. Thanks for staying with us. Uh, the United Nations Security Council is holding its quarterly open debate on the Middle East amid escalating violence in the region. Hungary's uh, Foreign Affairs Minister is currently addressing the sitting. Our Minister of International Relations, Dr. Naledi Pando, is about to address the gathering. Let's take you there live. Being praised on the streets. We see that rallies take place in order to praise acts of terror. And we see a modern age anti-Semitism being on the rise in some European countries. And I have to tell you that this we find unacceptable and frightening in the meantime. And we all know that this is a major, con this is a consequence of the massive illegal migratory flaws which have hit Europe in the recent years and which have uh, created parallel societies in many European countries. And we all know that in case this conflict in the Middle East escalates, we Europeans will have to face another tremendous and very dangerous waves of illegal migration. So, therefore, Mr. President, I want to make it very clear here as a conclusion that it is absolutely, absolutely unimaginable that any authority in Hungary would approve and allow any rally to take place with the uh, goal of uh, praising a terrorist attack or a terrorist organization. Thank you so much. I thank His Excellency, uh, Mr. Sijato, for his statement. I now give the floor to Her Excellency, uh, Ms. Naledi Pandora, Minister for International Relations and Cooperation of South Africa. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. President. I wish to begin by thanking the Federative Republic of Brazil for convening this timely open debate. We found the briefings uh, this morning most instructive. They provided terrible insights into the plight of innocent civilians in Gaza and the West Bank, as well as pointed to the urgent need to ensure the release of Israeli hostages as soon as possible. South Africa agrees with many of today's speakers that the ultimate solution to the conflict is finalizing the question of the two-state solution. We must work hard through the United Nations to create two states, Palestine and Israel, living side by side in peace and security. This must be done in accord with the established UN resolutions on the two-state solution. The Palestinian state should be created along the 1967 borders with East Jerusalem as its capital. South Africa also joins the urgent calls for an immediate comprehensive ceasefire and that humanitarian corridors should be opened so that aid and other basic services reach all those in need. Most importantly, we call on all parties to exercise restraint and to desist from fueling this patently unjust war and suffering of innocence. Mr. President, we also express condolences to the people of Palestine and of Israel for the lives lost during the past two weeks. We are horrified at the blatant targeting of civilians, a clear violation of international humanitarian law, the Geneva Convention and its protocols. Both Hamas and the State of Israel have committed these violations. Chairperson, the killing of civilians and destruction of civilian infrastructure in Gaza by Israeli forces goes against the tenets of international law, which prohibits the targeting of non-combatants, especially women, the aged, and children. There is an added obligation on an occupying power over the people and territory it occupies in terms of the Geneva Conventions, including a prohibition against collective punishment. This, of course, does not detract from South Africa's concern at the actions of Hamas, which also targeted non-combatants. Whilst we express concern at the current violence and deaths, we cannot ignore the fact that continued occupation has bred hatred, suffering, and pain. Just as Israel deserves peace and security, so are Palestinians deserving of sovereignty, peace, and security. It is our view that for international law to be credible, it must be applied uniformly and not be selective. Mr. President, in our view, the conflict has again illustrated 
the inadequacy of our own global organization, this body, the United Nations, and in particular, this council, which has the mandate of maintaining international peace and security. The council has clearly not been able over time to prevent conflicts from spiraling into intense violence and harm to ordinary civilians. All of us need to work harder at reforming our organization so that it is more capable of responding in protection of civilians. We all recall that in 1994, a genocide occurred in Rwanda with much of the whole world watching as innocent people were massacred. History cannot keep repeating such cruelty with all of us watching. We should establish a system of global governance that is fair, equitable, and has the capacity to respond to the needs of all persons in situations of threat and harm. A system that is not just a tool for the most powerful countries of the world, but that provides protection for the most vulnerable. Finally, South Africa is appalled at the Security Council's failure to agree a unified resolution that signals a full commitment to ending killing and suffering. There can be no search for compromise resolutions when this council is faced with a crisis of such proportions. We thus urge the council to do its work and ensure security and peace for the residents of Israel and of Gaza. I thank you, Chairperson. I thank Her Excellency, Ms. Pandora, for her statement. I now give the floor to His Highness Prince Faisal bin Farhan Farhun, Farhan Al Saud, Minister for Foreign Affairs of Saudi Arabia.